This is the Ultra Running History Podcast. I'm your host, Davey Crockett. Thanks. Thanks for coming. This is episode 130. In this episode, I will give a recap of the exciting 2023 Barkley Marathons, which always gets worldwide attention to the sport and makes history. The Barkley Marathons in Tennessee, with its historic low finish rate, only 15 finishers in more than 30 years, is perhaps the most difficult ultra-marathon trail race in the world. The inspiration for creating the Barkley in 1986 was the 1977 prison escape by James Earl Ray from Brushy Mountain State Prison. Ray was the convicted assassin of Martin Luther King Jr. He spent more than two days trying to get away in the very rugged Cumberland Mountains where the Barkley later was established. Ray's escape has been a subject of folklore. It was covered in episode 19. Barkley is the brainchild of Gary Cantrell, also known as Lazarus Lake, and Carl Henn, also known as Raw Dog. In 1985, they had been intrigued by the very few miles that James Earl Ray had covered during his failed escape. That year, Cantrell and Henn went up into the wilderness to backpack in two days the Boundary Trail, about 20 miles, constructed by the Civilian Conservation Corps decades earlier. They had just made it a park when we went up there and did that. We weren't even aware. We got there and they had a trailer with park rangers. The first thing it said was that to go on those trails, you had to get special permission from the rangers. And they didn't want to let us go. And then they tried to talk us out of it because they said they would just, nobody had made it all the way around those trails. And they would just have to come and rescue us. And we come, we said, no, no, we will do it. We got through, we hiked half of it the first day and then camped overnight and then hiked the other half of the loop the, the next next day. And then we came back to the ranger station and said, oh yeah, we, we did it, it was fun. And we have friends who would really enjoy coming out here to do this trail. <laughs> the idea for the Barkley had been hatched and a course was designed and plans were put in place for the first year of the Barkley in 1986 at Frozen Head State Park in Tennessee. The first few years of the race were covered in episode 20. In 2023, the five-loop Barkley Marathons course, thought to be roughly 130 miles and about 63,000 feet of elevation gain, was conquered for the first time in six years. Here is the story. Laz blew the conch shortly before 9 a.m. on March 14, 2023, signaling to the competitors that they had one hour to prepare for the start. At 9.54 a.m., Laz, sporting a new geezer hat in Japanese, lit the ceremonial cigarette, and about 40 daring athletes were off and running on the grueling course that, quote, eats its young. The 2023 field, including eight women, ran or walked up the trail toward the Cumberland Mountains. They had all trained hard, but also had to figure out and endure the purposely mysterious and fun registration process. In addition to writing an essay this year, they had to answer a series of questions including, what will be the 119th element on the periodic table? All right, sports fans, book number one, Barkey Marathon. Yeah, one down, 32 to go. Page 66, 58 to 66. 75 year old Frozen Ed Furta was the oldest starter. He was the first person ever to finish the Barkley Marathons back in 1988 when the course was about 55 miles. He finished that year in 32 hours, 14 minutes. This Barkley legend also came up with the idea for the book checkpoints, so runners could prove they made it around the course. This year, Furtaw was the first Barkley casualty returning to the camp early during Loop 1. 
Several runners finished Loop 1 in a blazing 8 hours and 18 minutes. The cutoff for Loop 1 was 13 hours and 20 minutes. To get an official finish, runners needed to finish 5 loops within 60 hours. There were no course markings, just general directions to the book checkpoints, and they could take a map. No GPS contraptions are permitted, but they could take a compass and a primitive watch. Seven runners did not finish Loop 1 in time to start Loop 2, but 31 started Loop 2. Loop 1 was in the clockwise direction. 2 and 3 would be counterclockwise, 4 in the preferred clockwise direction. For Loop 5, if any runner reached that far, the first runner could choose their direction, and the next runner would have to go in the opposite direction. The weather was pretty incredible this year, although the water jugs provided at the tower on Frozen Head still froze during the night. As usual, Keith Dunn was the main resource in the camp for Barkley updates, staying up late at night to tweet updates to his 65,000 followers. For a time, he was trending number three on Twitter. He used three phones with different network carriers to make sure he could stay connected. During Loop 1, instead of naming runners, he gave them nicknames describing them such as Guy with Mohawk, Guy with Glasses, and Another Bearded Guy. Three-time Barkley finisher Jared Campbell was called Nondescript Guy for the duration of his run. Barkley veteran Nicodemus De La Rosa of Bellingham, Washington, a previous finisher, returned to camp before finishing Loop 2. He said, I am done at 1.75 loops and couldn't be happier with the decision. I got what I wanted, which was to see if the course was still possible for me. After some irrecoverable navigation errors, too slow of a pace, and a dying headlamp, I lost precious time needed in order to finish. As runners finished loops, they presented their collection of 13 book pages to Laz, proving that they had reached each book on the course. Their pages needed to match the bib number they were assigned for the loop. About a day before the race, a master map of the locations of the books was provided by Laz. Traditionally, book titles are amusingly appropriate for the task, such as Death Walks the Woods and Don't Count Me Out. John Kelly, Albert Herrero Casas, Damien Hall, and Christoph Nonorg finished Loop 2 first, clocking two loops in just over 20 hours. Loop 2, mostly in the dark, took the leaders 11 hours 49 minutes. The biggest drama at the camp early on was disorganized runners not having all their pages in order. Dunn reported, This actually is an issue of which Laz is mindful. Runners who bring in their pages in a big wad make it difficult for Laz to sort them so they can get back out. It's been really cold and pages stick together, creating a bit of stress as Laz counts them out. Even with this delay, this year after Loop 2, there were much quicker turnarounds observed as crews were focused on the time. One runner, after finishing his loop and dropping out, cooked an egg burrito while showering. He took a camp stove and skillet into the shower, cooked the eggs, and ate the tortilla in the shower. Jasmine Paris, age 39, of the UK, who finished the fun run of three loops last year, was the first woman to begin loop three at 21 hours 27 minutes. She is an experienced ultra runner with many wins. In 2019, she won the 268-mile spine race in Great Britain. Sixteen thrashed runners did not finish Loop 2 within the cutoff time, which was 26 hours 40 minutes. Any runner who either dropped out or missed a cutoff would have the honor of having taps played for them on a bugle. Work, 15 runners started loop 3. Loop 3 cutoff time was 36 hours. 
they needed to start Loop 4 by that time. Those who wanted credit for the fun run of three loops had to finish within 40 hours. Barkley veteran Tomokazu Ihara, nicknamed Japanese Laz, with multiple Barkley attempts, and with about 40 100-mile finishes, completed Loop 3 with 4.5 minutes to spare, and started Loop 4 impressively with only 13 seconds before the 36-hour cutoff. Fifteen runners remained, including five Barkley virgins, or first-timers, two previous winners, and three previous fun run finishers. Four runners who did not start loop four were credited with finishing the fun run of three loops. Pavel Polonsi finished loop three in 36 hours, 36 minutes. Dunn reported, Pavel's fun run is pretty impressive because he finished the loop, which was supposed to be a day loop, without a light and in the dark. The light he had failed and he was not carrying a spare, so he got around part of the loop in the dark. A record six runners started Loop 4, including Jasmine Paris of the UK, who was only the second woman ever to start Loop 4. The first was Sue Johnston in 2001. Jasmine started with less than one minute to spare after a 13-minute crewing at camp. For much of the race up to that point, Damien Hall and John Kelly ran together. Sleep deprivation was growing. They planned to sleep on a book until the next runner arrived who would wake them up. Unfortunately, the next runner arrived only 30 seconds later, so they continued. On loop 4, John Kelly stretched to lead on the others during the climb up Frozen Head and later finished loop 4 in first place. He had intended to nap for a while in camp, but hearing that Aurelian Sanchez was hot on his heels, he left quickly, wanting to claim the clockwise direction. For the first time in history, four runners started Loop 5. Laz joked that the success so far this year will cause people to not apply next year, as they will perceive the course to be too easy. <laughs> <laughs> the four were... John Kelly, who was going clockwise, originally from Tennessee, living in North Carolina, is age 38. In 2017, he was the 15th finisher ever of the Barkley. He also finished the Barkley three-loop fun run in 2015, 2016, and 2019. In 2020, he won the 268-mile spine race in Great Britain. He finished 10th at the 2022 Hard Rock 100 in Colorado. He has a PhD in electrical engineering and machine learning from Carnegie Mellon and works as the chief technology officer for an insurance company. The next runner on Loop 5 was Aurelien Sanchez, who was going counterclockwise from France and is age 32. He holds the self-supported fastest known time for the famed John Muir Trail, 213 miles through the Sierra Nevada mountain range of California. In 2019, he did gain some experience on part of the Barkley course, running the 50K Barkley Fall Classic, finishing 22nd. Carl Sabe, going clockwise, is from Belgium, a dentist, and is age 33. It was his third attempt at Barkley. He finished the Barkley three-loop fun run in 2019 and 2022, and won Belgium's 2020 Big Dogs Backyard Race with 312 miles. In 2018, he crushed the Appalachian Trail speed record by four days. Last year on Loop 4, Sabe became disoriented and ended up wandering around the town of Petros. And the fourth runner on Loop 5 was Damien Hall, who went counterclockwise. He's from Great Britain and is age 47. This was his first time running Barkley. In January this year, he won the 268-mile spine race in Great Britain. He has finished that difficult race three times. In 2018, he finished UTMB in fifth place for his fourth UTMB finish. Kelly had a five-minute lead on Sanchez, about an hour on Sabe, 
and nearly two hours on Hall, who started Loop 5 with a minute to spare. Jasmine Paris came into camp a few hours later, becoming the first woman in history to complete four Barkley loops, although she was over the cutoff for Loop 4. She had found nine of the 13 books within the cutoff time, a wonderful achievement. She later said, quote, Conditions couldn't have been better, and I was lucky to share miles on the trail with wonderful people. I knew from the start that training hadn't been ideal, but I gave it my best effort and I'm proud of that. I still think a woman can finish five loops, although I suspect Laz will make next year even harder. Shortly later, Damien Hall returned to camp with no pages. He said, I'm annoyed. I somehow couldn't find a book I'd only recently located. It was amongst some capstones on Chimney Top, where there are loads of good book hiding places. I began believing it had been stolen by a crow or something. I was very sleep deprived. Yuck. After an hour of searching for the first book, he eventually gave up and returned. A Barclay finish would have to wait for another year. So there were three left. They all looked fresh when arriving at the tower on Frozen Head. Kelly shared some details of his Loop 5 experience. With the initial warm conditions on that loop, he tried lying down with the back of his head and shoulders in an ice-cold creek. He succeeded in getting a catnap, which helped for another couple hours. But then, fading again, he needed rest. The first water drop was near Quitter's Road, where I could see muddy tire tracks. I thought, that mud will still be cold from last night and should be a perfect bed. I walked out there, poured some more water over me, and laid down on my stomach right in one of the tracks. He then started to hallucinate. One of my childhood friends, who I haven't seen in 20 years, walked by with his wife and daughters. He just laughed and said, that's a John Kelly nap if I've ever seen one. Confused, he got up, pushed on to Garden Spot, used the book there as a pillow and dozed off, expecting Aurelian, coming from the other direction, would wake him up. After 15 minutes of sleep, he pushed on. Aurelian Sanchez completed the tough counterclockwise loop first and won the 2023 Barkley Marathons in 58 hours, 23 minutes, 12 seconds. When Sanchez finished, he wasn't sure if he won or even had an official finish, because he did not have a page from one of the books that a hiker had prematurely taken back to the camp. Sanchez reached the place where he knew the book should be. He searched for five minutes and then positioned stones in a certain way to say, Laz, where the book should have been located. In the end, he was given credit for that book. John Kelly also completed Loop 5, finishing just 19 minutes later in 58 hours, 42 minutes, 23 seconds becoming only the third runner in history to finish the Barkley more than once. As Ladd was checking Kelly's pages, he said in a serious voice, This year it is six loops. Carl Sabe completed loop five in 59 hours, 53 minutes, 33 seconds. He also had been suffering from hallucinations. Family and friends celebrated together back in Belgium when they received the news via Twitter. Three Barclay finishers for 2023. These three were the first finishers since 2017 when Kelly finished in 59 hours, 23 minutes. It should be noted that this was Sanchez's first attempt at the Barclay. His loop five time was 13 hours and one minute. This was the second year that there were three finishers, the other year being in 2012. Carl Sabe's finish with six minutes to spare was the slowest in history, a great honor. It was his first finish in his three attempts. Shortly after finishing, still collapsed at the yellow gate. With a grin, he pressed Laz's that was easy button. That was easy.
The next day, Tsabe explained what went on during the final loop. It was one big hallucination. Because of the sleep deprivation and the physical exertion, my brain switched itself off. I no longer knew who or what I was doing it for, that it was a running race. Fortunately, I knew what the course looked like through the months of preparation. Being so close to the time limit gave me an adrenaline rush, and I came to my senses. I consciously experienced the finish. I'm not going to do it again. The approach was to do everything for it one more time. The preparation is so intense. It mortgages your social life. You see your wife and child less. It's nice that I can close the chapter by walking out. While I usually go for the fastest known times, I can live with my slowest known time on the Barkley course for sure. John Kelly later said, Brevilian Sanchez put on a clinic running an extremely smart race and nailing navigation on his first attempt. Seeing Carl Sabe come in just under the wire was incredible, and such a well-deserved finish. Jasmine Paris had the best Barkley by a woman ever, and I know there is even more she is capable of. This year, I got to enjoy a beautiful sunset on that final climb. I sat at the top to take in the view and count my last set of pages near the same spot I sat with my dad in a photo over 30 years ago. Alexandre Ricard, a Barclay veteran, was Aurelien Sanchez's crew chief. He provided some details to Le Telegram about Aurelien's race. From the start, he ran with another Frenchman, a Barclay veteran. His transitions between loops were very fast, 10 minutes after loop 1 and 5 minutes after loop 2. He took short power naps after loops three and four. Ricard said, In transitions, he was always lucid. It even scared me a little at first. The transitions were so fast. I was afraid that he would get carried away or that he would pay for it later. But ultimately, no. It was a pretty incredible ending. We were at the yellow gate. Night was starting to fall. Then we see in the distance a person coming down the mountain and we see that it was him. Ricard summed up Barclay this way for his fellow Europeans. Everything is done so that you are in a zone of perpetual discomfort. At Barclay, you enter physical and mental dimensions that have nothing to do with the race laps. Aurelian has accomplished something exceptional. The winners are those who finish. If you like this podcast, please tell your friends. With that, this is Davy Crockett, and this is the Ultra Running History Podcast. I hope you run fast and far, enjoy life, get outdoors. And most of all, stay safe and don't take unnecessary chances.